I am honored to be with you today for your commencement from one of the finest universities in the world. That was a direct quote from Steve Jobs at Stanford University in 2005. Now, although this is not Stanford, and unlike Steve Jobs, we will be graduating, I'm even more honored to be standing alongside you and giving today's last lecture. So, I'd like to begin by saying, congratulations, Griffins. Some of you may know me as the girl who ran Corn Roast, maybe as the girl from Sault Ste. Marie, the city that everyone has a connection to somehow, or as the girl who joined the squash team, having played squash only twice in her life. If you don't know me, my name is Tiana, and I'm graduating from biomedical engineering, but I am only one of hundreds of us entering this next pivotal point in our lives. As you join me here today, I want you to reflect on two things that me and you have in common right at this very moment. One, we're graduating, and that means we've officially earned our right to take photos around campus in all the classic spots and poses, despite literally any weather conditions. And two, we all love food. This next photo was taken immediately following those graduation photos on campus. Some may say we were a tad overdressed for burgers. It's no secret that the University of Guelph has been ranked with the best food on campus in the country for over three years. Yet, despite having wood oven pizza at our fingertips at Creelman's, 24-hour crepes at Mountain, and fresh Mongolian grill, we still manage to keep Domino's in business. But why am I talking about food? I'd like to welcome you all to your last lecture. Food, you are what you eat, and the parallel to our experiences, by an engineer with little to no qualifications, but do any of us really have any? Today's lecture will be a new take on experiences, and the things learned throughout the past few years at the University of Guelph through the lens of five food and eating recommendations you've probably heard multiple times in your life. One, we need a variety. Although you may have consumed the same past abilities order for a week, or maybe you meal prepped because you were tied on time and ended up eating the same lentil soup every night for dinner, we can't deny that we need variety. Food variety is important because different foods have different nutrients. Different nutrients are important because they give us energy and are essential for growth. Similarly, our experience at the University of Guelph were all very different. Not because of nutrients per se, but because of the purpose they served in our lives. The University and City of Guelph brought opportunity. Maybe that included meeting new friends through intramurals like bubble soccer, trying new things like pottery classes downtown or rock climbing on campus, or maybe it was volunteering somewhere new, like a donkey sanctuary. From academics to clubs to part-time jobs, the past few years were packed with different experiences that added value, or nutrients if you will, to our lives, giving us energy to continue doing the harder school stuff and allowing us to grow into who we are today. Not only do we need variety on our plate, we need it in our lives. As some of us begin to get jobs or specialize, I want us to remember that one of the most beautiful things about university and life was the variety of experiences we could partake in. So I'd like to ask you, what variety have you had up until now and what kind of variety would you like in the future? Two, drink lots of water. Water helps to digest food. For today's purposes, in comparing food and experience, water symbolizes the people who helped digest experiences. Maybe it was calling home to vent about a midterm, a good group of friends that got you through just about any technical assignment, Bob with his dogs and service with a smile, or maybe it was the professor who convinced you that dropping out of your last semester to open a bakery maybe isn't the best idea. Many people have contributed to our experiences, whether being there with us, supporting us afterwards, or even just by listening. Why did I use water as an analogy? If you know me, you know I wouldn't last more than an hour without my two liter jug. So this is more just an excuse to get others on the bandwagon. Three, we need balance. If there's anything we should remember from the four food groups, I think we can all agree that balance was essential. But I'm not talking about balancing greens and whole grains. Throughout the past four years, we learned to balance not only our time, but also our strengths, weaknesses, and life amidst COVID. Maybe we are still working on seeing the few glimmers of good that came out of the past few years. Maybe it was a new hobby, some time alone to reflect, some extra time with people who are close to you, or even a new appreciation for the small things, like seeing people in person, maskless. Whatever it was, we found some good in the bad. A month before the pandemic hit, my best friend that I met here at the University of Guelph and I went to Vietnam. We got tattoos, mine being the yin yang, 
a symbol, a Buddhist symbol for equilibrium, showing balance, and that in the dark there is light, and in the light there is dark. We were at the peak of our lives, excited for the future and happy. Within a month, all of our lives completely changed. The point here is that we will not be able to avoid bad things. But the lesson is that within the bad, there is some good, even if we sometimes need to look a little harder. Four, take small bites. Small bites, A, prevent choking, and B, helps you to appreciate different flavors of food. A faculty advisor for my team's capstone project once told us, it's not about having one large epiphany, it's about having many small ones. This was in the context of our design project and making sure we spent time with small goals and achievements rather than expecting everything to come together all at once. I think this is transferable to our lives. It's not about expecting to know all the answers right now or expecting everything to make sense, but rather it's about smaller mini epiphanies and small bites that we'll progress and reach our desired goal. In a nutshell, don't worry about always taking big bites. Celebrate the small feats or things that make you smile like a massive slice of pizza and recognize that you don't need to make sense of everything all at once or even right now. And five, change the way you think about food. After you eat, your body goes to work digesting the food. All of those awesome nutrients have a role in the body. Everything you eat, in one way or another, becomes a little part of what you are. Similar to food that passes and becomes part of what we are, the University of Guelph has played its role in our lives and become part of who we are. And now, as graduating students, we are ready for our next meal or our next set of experiences. The past few years have been filled with little and large experiences, this graduation being one of them. Take a moment to reflect on the smaller experiences, the ones that you may not have really thought about how they shaped you, but in some way have. Maybe it was seeing Bill Nye building a snowman on Johnston Green with an international student and feeling like it was also your first time seeing snow, asking your Aggie friends to teach you how to dance to Cotton Eye Joe, meeting a cute boy at that part-time job, painting the cannon overnight and going to classes the next day, going camping with strangers and leaving as best friends, cycling between your bed and desk for just about all of COVID, or sharing an espresso with your brother at 3 p.m. And the list continues. When I travel, something I do is try the most exotic foods. Although authentic to the culture, it's very different than what I'm used to. This is usually met with the reaction of, how did you do that? But I'm never really asked why. Why do I do this? First and foremost, I enjoy experiencing all that a culture has to offer, one of those things being food. Second, I do this because I know in some way it has opened my mind and challenged me to set aside what I'm comfortable with or used to. I like to take that energy and apply it to the rest of my life. In my own terms, I call it unnecessary character building. I coined this term after working my first job at 14 when I quickly learned that work is actually hard and needless to say, every job after that one has been an improvement. Some other examples of unnecessary character building you may have experienced include wiping out on Johnston Green in the winter, the slight panic on WebAdvisor once a semester when course selection rolls around and 200 students click submit at 8 a.m., or realizing you spent more time waiting in a Starbucks line at the library than you did actually studying there. Another example is COVID. Fill out this card. When COVID hit, I missed out on blank. Although we may not realize it, this made us at least a tad stronger, perhaps a little more socially awkward, and will make for a good story in the future. I once had a friend tell me, don't live for the moment, live for the stories afterward. You could take that with a grain of salt. Unnecessary character building is the kind of stuff that makes you a better person despite you knowing it at the time. As we graduate, remember that no experience is wasted. It might just be a little unnecessary character building to prepare you for the next best thing in your life. And in doing this, we must keep in mind the value of variety, balance, and our perspective that goes into selecting just which experiences will benefit us the most. I chose the topic of food today because I'm Italian and food always brought my family together, which is what I'm trying to do today with the 2022 graduating class. I'd like to revisit the phrase, you are what you eat. I hope that after 10 minutes of attempting to draw parallels between experiences and food, you realize the same phrase applies to our experiences. I'd like to rewrite it as, you are what you experience. And now let's add some fluff for our non-technical writers out there you are a marvelous and unique collection of your experiences. 
And now, toss that in Grammarly once. Yep, forgot that A. And now adapt it for a discussion post. Wow, great discussion. I would agree that we are impacted by our experiences. Moral of the story, you are not only what you eat, you are what you experience. And as much as I will say congratulations to each of you, what I really want to say is, I wish you a million more unnecessary character building experiences. The kind that shape you into a unique and inspiring human being that improves life. So, congratulations Griffins. Continue to learn from food and completely unrelated, but don't forget to scoop those benefits on your alumni card. Thank you.